Today we're going to make these modular puzzle piece planner things. I'm for us. Okay, now before you get too excited, let me say that I cut these out on a CNC. And I know that's a turnoff for a lot of people out there. Even though I do believe that digital fabrication tools will continue to become increasingly commonplace. And in 10 years, we'll probably look back and think it's funny that there was ever even a distinction. Well, actually, probably not. I mean, hand tool snobs still exist today, so I'm sure hand-operated power tool snobs will exist then. But I digress. That's another conversation for another time. But anyhow, if you are a fan of CNC projects, stick around. And actually, even if you aren't, stick around, because next week I'm going to post a handmade version of a similar but different idea, so this will at least give you some context. All right, let's get to work. So before I could cut anything out, I had to make a blank that would yield the pieces. Here I'm using 8 quarter cherry. It was actually already really flat, so I didn't need to join or plane anything. And instead I just marked out a couple of lengths and cross cut them. Next I took them over to the table saw to make sure that the mating edges were nice and flat, because I was too lazy to move out my joiner, and then I edge glued them together. So while those are drying, let's talk about the design a bit. When I started coming up with ideas, I actually made it a point to avoid Pinterest and Google Images. I know that there's a bunch of small planner ideas out there, and I wouldn't be surprised if somebody has done something similar to this already, but I just wanted to try to avoid influence as much as possible. So the basic idea was to make something that could come together to form one specific shape, in this case a hexagon, but that could also be combined in a number of other ways to come up with some random shapes. I kept thinking of it as a centerpiece for a table. So something like this might work for a round or square table, and something like this might work better for a longer rectangular table. Kind of like a runner. But anyway, once I had landed on an idea, coming up with a design was actually pretty easy. I started by drawing out a hexagon shape at the size that I wanted in SketchUp. Then I just kept splitting it into multiple pieces randomly until I found a set of shapes that I liked. This one. From there, it was just a matter of refining the design. My first idea was to have the X-Carve hollow out a pocket for everything to sit in, and then cut the shape free from the wood afterward. Now, thankfully, Easel, which is the software made by Inventables that X-Carve runs off of, has a function that lets you simulate the cut to see how long it's gonna take. And when I hit simulate, I saw that this particular cut was gonna take over seven and a half hours to perform. And honestly, that's fine. I mean, the X-Carve is happy to work all day and it doesn't ask for breaks but it made me think that there's probably a better way to go about things. My next idea was to scrap the pockets and instead cut a hole all the way through the individual pieces so that I was basically making an odd-shaped geometric donut with quarter-inch thick walls. But before cutting out the outer shape, I set it to make a cut that was offset by an eighth of an inch and a quarter-inch deep. So this would result in the piece having a rabbit. Then I could take that same offset shape and cut out some pieces from quarter inch plywood and glue them in as the bottoms. I can't remember the exact cut time, but it made it a fraction of what it was before, so I went with it. Back out in the garage, my cherry blank was dry by this time, so over the table saw I cut it into a nice square and then headed over to the X-carve. Here on my first attempt, I messed up straight off the bat. First, you'll notice a nice line that I cut across the whole thing because I had the bit too low to start with. That didn't really bug me though because I knew that this was going to end up being the bottom anyway, so there was still plenty of time to recover from it. But a couple minutes into the process, I realized my bigger problem. The material that I'm using is about an inch and three quarters thick, but the eighth inch bit that I'm using isn't. So basically the collet would have bottomed out before the bit could get all the way through. Somehow I just didn't even think about it until after I'd hit carve. But luckily I caught it early enough that I could still come up with a better solution. So I hit the emergency stop button, went back inside and redrew my file with larger radiuses on the corners that a quarter inch bit could handle, and then went back to it. This time when I hit the carve button, I could rest easy because I knew that I had finally thought of everything and set it all up correctly. But since I was cutting a pretty beefy chunk of hardwood, I kept the cut settings pretty conservative, so it took a little while. But you know what doesn't take a little while? Building and or maintaining your website with Squarespace. And that's because they make it easy with their award-winning templates, and should you ever have an issue, they'll get you back on track fast with their 24-7 customer support. Seriously, 
Squarespace websites really are great looking and dead simple to use. I used to code my website by hand and made the switch about a year and a half ago, and I'm honestly really happy that I did. So if you're thinking about launching a website, or even if you have an existing one, whether that's a personal portfolio, a site for a business like a restaurant, or an online store, they'll have something that's perfect for you. So do yourself a favor and check them out. You can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash four eyes and enter offer code four eyes to get 10% off your first purchase. Just click the link in the description. All right. Thanks, Squarespace. Now let's get back to it. So in this shot, you can see that the inside shape has been cut free. So that centerpiece is going to totally disappear. And now we're cutting what will become the rabbit followed by the exterior piece. Once that was finished, in my easel file, I deleted all of the lines except for the lines that created the rabbits. Then I switched my settings so that the bit would follow the outside of the path rather than the inside, slipped in a piece of quarter inch material, and cut the bottoms free. Now somehow I forgot to film it, but once that was done, I just glued the bottom pieces into the rabbit, and then after a bit of sanding and finishing, I was done. If you're wondering what kind of plants these are, that would be fake succulents. That might not be their scientific term, but it's what I searched on Amazon to find them. So as you can probably guess, I don't know much about plants, but I'm assuming that most would probably need some sort of drainage. So if you were to use real plants in these, maybe some perforation holes in the bottom would do the trick. I don't really like taking care of plants, as evidenced by my front yard, which is primarily concrete rocks and fake grass. But as for these little planners, I'm actually really happy with the way that they came out. In fact, this might be my favorite small project that I've done so far. I just really like them. And so does breakfast. For the record, the cat's name is actually Peppa. But I swear someday I'm going to succeed in getting my wife to agree to let me name one of our pets breakfast. But until then, here are the names of some of my Patreon members that I'd like to thank. Grant Ramsey... Nathan Howard, Corey Ward, Kevin Mahone, Sasha Van Geet, L.A. Makers, Doug Finelli, Robert Barth, and Derek Johnson. Unlike a cat, I only have one life. And thanks to you guys and your support, it's better than it used to be. And that's because you're enabling me to do the thing that I love. Make really mediocre woodworking videos on YouTube that are littered with cat puns. Get it? Litter? If you want to support the show too, click on the Patreon link in the description and see if it's for you. And as always, no pressure. See you next time.